Hello, um, my name is Sarah Watkinson and I live in Oxfordshire and some of the time in Northumberland and I was very lucky to grow up in Wharfdale in North Yorkshire. Um, I've had a career in university biological research and teaching and more recently in poetry writing and so I have several books published on fungi, um, workbooks and more recently a couple of books of poetry mainly about nature but also about people and they've gone down quite well. And so I want to tell you now that I'm really excited about my first novel, which has just been published. It's called Native Soil. Um, and the reason for the title is it's about two things. It's about the people who belong to a place, but also the non-humans, especially the soil bugs, who call the same place home and whom we may not be quite so much aware of. My story in the novel is inspired by what I've learnt in university about landscape, really. And I've, I love the Yorkshire Dales landscape where I grew up. And I, in fact, I love all wild landscapes, especially in the north and west of England. But also my book is about the non-humans, these soil bugs who make the whole ecosystem work. In the Dales, you see this beautiful landscape of interconnected layers. There's the rock, which is limestone beautiful fertile limestone or acid millstone grit, which is layered on top of it. And then between the rock and the greenery, there's the soil. And then in the soil, there are the plants and the animals and us. But the soil is key to the whole thing. And we are just totally unaware that the invisible wildlife of microbes underfoot is what sustains the whole thing. And we haven't really been able to learn much about it. Um, but now we have almost magical DNA-based methods, which means we can explore this completely unknown landscape of um, tiny things underground, what they are, what they're doing. They're the secrets of soil, fungi and biodiversity. So that's where I'm coming from. The story is inspired by the unfolding conflict that we are going through at the moment between conservation of nature versus intensive farming. And the climate and biodiversity crisis has just increased this conflict and has, it's become really quite passionate, involves deep emotions on both sides. And so my story is set among people who are caught in the crossfire, the farmers and the ecological scientists, and how the policy made by policymakers who may not know a great deal about it, um, the effects that they have upon policy changes have upon the people who, whose lives are devoted to the science or to the farming, um, lonely lives sometimes, difficult lives, but also lives of great passion and lifelong commitment, which the policymakers don't share. Olivia is a rich young widow. Um, she's recovering from the tragic loss of her husband. This is how a lot of romantic stories start. Um, what Olivia has, has done is Having recovered from her terrible bereavement, she's now building a new life, regenerating a Dale's farm, which she's been lucky enough to be able to buy with her husband's legacy. And the, she meets Andrew, and Andrew is a globe-trotting environmental scientist and master of magical DNA technology. She's heard about him when they meet because he's a TV personality environmentalist and he talks a lot about nature on the television. And she's been watching him from a distance all this time, but then she gets the chance to meet him. And she, just after she meets him, he has a personal career problem, which is as a result of policy change, he loses his university job. And so after thinking about it, she invites him to come to work on her farm. And so this man with a mission, Andrew, who is dedicated to discovering invisible wildlife and telling people about it, comes and works with Olivia to reveal the invisible wildlife of the Dales ecosystem. What underlies these beautiful hay meadows and the rocky moors and the sheep and the, all the other creatures who live on it and the people who live there. They'd like to be together and they get more and more enthusiastic about each other and really fall very deeply in love, even though she has sworn she's never going to be committed that way or have another hostage to fortune in the shape of a marriage. She's not going to go there. Um, but nevertheless, she can't avoid being completely swept up in her admiration and 
really she has a crush on Andrew. So can they get together? And this conflict gradually works itself out over the course of a summer where we meet all the people who influence them directly, their families and friends and so forth. But we also become aware of policymakers, rather like fate, whose doings impinge on them seriously, but of whom they're normally quite unaware. And I have two particular policymakers, one on each side of the sustainability and the intensive farming standoff. So finally, the question is, is, it, is there any way they can be together? And the main difficulty from their point of view is that Olivia is passionately devoted to her farm, her land and her people. This is where she's come to rest after all the upheavals of her life and where she is determined to be for the rest of her life. She's simply not going to leave her land and her people. But Andrew, on the other hand, is a scientist discovering new things all the time. He's thrilled to be taken up by very advanced scientists in America. He has an invitation to go and work there, which he cannot refuse. And he's used to traveling all over the world, trying to answer the question, are soil microbes just the same everywhere or are they different in different places? And this is what drives him. So you can see that they have a conflict. How can they be together? How can they be apart? It's too difficult. So I hope that readers will be um, on the side of Olivia and Andrew and that you will be hoping that they work something out and interested to see how they do actually manage what you might think of as a 21st century solution. It's very difficult. Lives are long. Places are, they just last for a long time. What, what do you do? Well, I must say, writing this novel has been an absolute joy and a terrific trial and difficulty. It's given me new respect for novelists. Um, I absolutely love writing long-form fiction. I love how, once your characters develop, you begin to see them. Um, they f um, these scenes and characters form in your head. It's, it's a bit like daydreaming, but more constructive because you're left with an interesting text at the end. A actually writing when the flow goes well. It's like being on holiday in an exciting new place and just coming downstairs and getting back, back to your life, leaving your study behind, is a bit like coming home after being away. So it, it really is a very, very absorbing thing. And while writing poetry is intense, it's also very much in the moment and then it's quickly over. But with, with writing a novel, you live with these people and it's um, a very extraordinary experience. I must say, I'd advise anybody who wants to write a book to read the sort of novel they like and see what the craft of it, See, try and see what the author has done to make it a riveting read. Study the craft of it. Um, after I retired from my university job, I did a diploma in creative writing and without it, I simply couldn't have begun because there are storytelling, particularly the grand old genre of romantic fiction, which Darwin used to enjoy, actually, in, in moments of relaxation. It's a, it's a way of taking people with you into a big imaginative world, and there are ways of doing it, and you can learn this craft. And once you've learnt the tricks, it is quite amazing how it all works. It's a very powerful, very powerful technique. I hope you will like my book. Um, it's not without its flaws, I'm sure, but I'm told that it's a gripping read, which gives me great pleasure. And I'm also told that the science is not boring, but actually quite exciting. So um, I do hope you'll buy native soil. It should be appearing and available to or available to order in all good bookshops quite soon. Um, and it's available also um, in print as a paperback or online, and you can get it as an ebook if you want. So thank you very much for listening to me. Goodbye.